שיר למעלות. אשא עיניי אל ההרים, מאין יבוא עזרי. On Sunday, January 21st, 2024, I went on a trip to Israel unlike any other. I went to an Israel that is traumatized, that is hurting. And I went with three goals in mind. First, to bring a collective hug from the Temple of Muna community, from myself, from all American Jews to Israel and to Israelis. Second, to see with my own eyes the tragedy that occurred on October 7th, the pain, the stories of loss and of heroism. And third, I brought Art Staka, our contributions to causes that I was able to visit and that I know crucially need our assistance. Here's the story of my trip. Even though I've been to Israel many times, I immediately noticed how similar it is, but also different. You are immediately greeted with pictures of the hostages as you walk through the airport. In the sense of unity, we will overcome. While our hearts are being held captive in Aza, we will bring the hostages home now. As I walk through the cities of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, the signs are everywhere. First, return the hostages. We are bringing them home now. And there's graffiti. This one says, stop the war. Signs that say we are leaving the darkness and the shadow of death and returning our loved ones quickly to the embrace of their families. This Israeli flag really captured my imagination because it represents the distortion that everyone's feeling being traumatized every day. On the second day I was in Israel, my aunt and I took the new high-speed train from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv and visited Kikar HaChatufim, Hostage Plaza, where you're immediately greeted with how many days, hours, minutes, and seconds the hostages have been in captivity. The exhibits there are powerful, from pictures to a long Shabbat dinner table showing both what people are now enjoying since they've been freed and those who are still in Gaza who have almost no food and are suffering. The hourglass shows how long they've been in captivity. And then we met with the families. Captive Yegev Borstag's grandmother and his cousin. It was his birthday, so they gave my aunt one of 3,000 birthday cakes for us to enjoy. We later ate it, and it felt like a great mitzvah. Then we met with Nadav Rudef, who asked us to remember his dad, Lior, and to put his picture up in the synagogue, which I've done. We met the uncle of the DJ at the Nova Music Festival, who also told me that he's there every single day at the plaza. One of the most powerful parts of the whole plaza is that there's a tent where each night different groups come in and play music and lead singing and the hostage families and others just gather in a sense of oneness that is so powerful. The next morning, my friend Ezra Corman, who's also been Temple of Muna's tour guide on Israel trips for the last 15 years, led me down south, where my cousin, Dr. Alon Lapidot, who works in that area, also met us. We started at Kibbutz Kfar Aza, right on the Gaza border, which suffered terribly during the attacks. The terrorists came right into their main courtyard where a couple of people tried to hold them off, but were killed. The terrorists then rampaged the entire kibbutz. One of the homes was on display, 
the home of Sivan and Naor. You can see the bullet holes through the door, the blood still on the sofa, the last messages that Naor had with her dad. Lear from the kibbutz gave us a powerful tour of the entire area and the story of what happened. From there, we went to the town of Steyrot, which has experienced many missile attacks from Hamas over the last 17 years. Here, Hamas took over the police station, which Israel was able eventually to take back. This is the mural next to where the police station was. My cousin alone, who works in Steyrot, pointed out some of the places where there were terrible attacks, including one on a group of elderly Israelis. From there, we went to Kibbutz Reim, which has a different story than Kibbutz Kfar Aza. Here, a small group was able to hold off a group of 120 to 180 terrorists for many hours, preventing much death and suffering that took place in other places. The hero, Harel, is pictured here with us. And you can see the trees where he formed a line shooting and saving the people of the kibbutz as the terrorists thought there was a much larger force there. From there, we went to the Nova Music Festival where 364 young people were murdered and numerous atrocities occurred. We could see the memorials for each one of them, a picture, a description. Trees were planted in their memory. It was hard to walk amongst all of these memorials. We met a woman named Michal Semer. She was shot and injured as she tried to run away from the festival. She survived hiding under an Israeli tank and eventually was rescued. From there, we went to the Niti Vote Car Cemetery, which in some ways is the most devastating picture, as you can see where the terrorists shot cars, but you can still see the people's belongings strewn next to and in the cars themselves. Thankfully, acts of loving kindness are everywhere, and there is great hope and uplift even amidst this darkness. We visited in Itivot, a gemach, a place that distributes charity to so many people who are hungry and in need. And during this war, it also provides services for soldiers, bringing them meals in Gaza, whatever is required. Shlomi, the head of it, was incredibly inspirational, and we are supporting his work. I was able to spend time with my family in Israel, which was an incredible joy. We celebrated my first cousin's son, Ophir's Bar Mitzvah. I got to teach him how to put on his talit and tefillin. We celebrated his Bar Mitzvah, followed by a wonderful party where the family sang a song they wrote for Ophir. We got to spend Shabbat together, all 22 of us, and concluded with Havdalah. On my way back to the airport that night, I bumped into old friends. There was something about seeing them that brought the whole experience together. We are one people, just like the Israeli flag flying over Jerusalem's entrance. Just as this story took us from sadness to hope, I pray that we all find ways to move ourselves to a more hopeful perspective, that we find ways to continue to support Israel and hopefully to visit Israel soon. May the one who makes peace above bring peace to Israel and to the whole world. Am Yisrael Chai, the Jewish people live.